Good morning, good morning. We do not own the rights to any of this music. Deacon Adams, God bless you, man. The storm is passing over. The storm is passing over. The storm is passing over. Hallelujah. God bless you all. Good morning, Brother Dale. Good to see you. Good to see you. Sister Jocelyn, God bless you. I love you, sweetheart. passing over. Good morning, Miss Sharon. Good to see you this morning. God bless you. Miss Lisa. Passing over. Hallelujah. Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is Pastor Gerald Adams with the Restoration Church Ministries. It's an honor, a privilege, and a pleasure to be with you all today. God bless you, Lady Adams. God bless you, Sister Synovia. Good to see you all on this morning. It's an honor, a privilege, and a pleasure to be with you on this morning. God bless you, Mama Baron. Uh, uh, being with us today. God bless you. God bless you. And God bless you. We're not going to belabor the hour. We're going to go into prayer and then into God's word. So if you have your Bibles, we're going to look at a very familiar passage of scripture. Uh, I've preached from this scripture uh, text before, uh, ministered from it before, but I want to I want to share something a little bit different with you this morning uh, that God has spoken to my spirit to tell you today. And so we're going to the book of Acts, Acts, the 27th chapter, and we're going to start reading at verse 14. But as we do before we do anything, we invoke the presence of our Lord, our God, and our Savior. And so if you would bow your heads with me in a word of prayer as we go before the throne of grace. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus, you have been so good to us and we thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for your people. We give you honor, glory, and praise, O God, because you, hallelujah, are the one that woke us up this morning and got us started on our way. Lord, I want to thank you for my brothers and sisters, O God, that are watching, O God, and those that are going to watch later, God. Bless them and keep them, O God, as you have blessed us, O God, with another day, O God. 
And we look forward, oh God, to seeing what you're going to do for us today. Speak, oh God, to your people today. Use me for your glory. I decrease, oh God, that the Holy Spirit might increase and that your people might be blessed and edified. Oh God, that you, oh God, will get all the glory and be glorified. And the demons of hell would run scared and be horrified. All because the gospel of Jesus Christ has been preached to the world. God, we thank you and we praise you today. Bless and make us a blessing. In Jesus' name, we do pray. We say amen, amen, and amen. So we thank God for each and every one of you being with us today. Hallelujah. And just as a test, I want someone to, 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 to just say praise God, just so I can make sure that we don't have any issues with the, the feed before we go forward in Jesus' name. right? Just wanted to make sure that the feed is okay. All right. Thank you, Ms. Sharon. God bless you. God bless you. All right. Acts, the 27th chapter, verses 14 through 25. And the word of the Lord reads on this wise, but not long after there arose against a temperous wind called uh, Eurydon, and when the ship was caught and could not bear up unto the wind, they let her drive. And running under a certain island which was called Claudia, we had much work to come by the boat which when they had taken up, they used uh, helps undergirding the ship and fearing lest they should fall into the quicksand, struck sail and uh, so were driven. And we being exceedingly tossed with the temper, the next day they lighted the ship. And the third day we cast out with our own hands the tackling of the ship. And when neither sun nor star in many days appear, and no small tempers laid on us, all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, Ye should have hearkened unto me, and not have loosed from Crete, and to be have and to have gained this harm, and lose. And when, and now I exalt you to be of good cheer, for there shall be uh, no shall be no loss of any man's life uh, among you, but of the ship. For there stood by me this night an angel of God, who I, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God has given thee all them <coughs> excuse me, that sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be even as it was told to me. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. May he sanctify deep down within our hearts. God bless you, Miss Bonnie. Good to see you this morning. I'm praying for you and your entire family. God bless you all. I want to speak to you today uh, just to leave a thought with you, a thought that God placed in my spirit early this morning as I was uh, reading and studying and, and just a thought that he placed on my heart that I just couldn't seem to shake. And so I want to share that with you today. It is simply, I want, and I want you all to grab hold to this word today. It's simply, the storm is passing over. The storm is passing over. I want you to get that within your hearts today. I know that we are going through a lot, but the storm is passing over. And I want to begin this message today with a prerequisite, and, I, and it's simply this. You will need to trust God in this one. No matter what it is you're going through, no matter what you're facing, at this very time, the prerequisite for this message today 
is simply that you're going to need to trust God in this one. Okay. A storm can happen at any stage and at any age of life. Despite what you think everyone's going through, uh, they, everyone in this life goes through some type of storm. It is with the certainty that there are three distinct group of people listening to this message today. The first are those who are just getting out of a storm. The second are those who are currently in the midst of a storm. And the third are those who are getting ready to go into a storm. Praise the name of our God. If you hadn't been through a storm in your life, just keep living. Hallelujah. That's what the old, older saints used to tell us. If you hadn't gone through anything in life, hallelujah, just keep living and you're going to get there. Praise the name of our God. So those are the three distinct uh, groups of people that I'm speaking to today. Those that are, are getting out of a storm. Those that, hallelujah, are in the midst of a storm and are those that are ready to go into a storm. Whenever you may find yourself, wherever you may find yourself this morning, be encouraged today, hallelujah, that the storm is passing over. There are many types of storms people are facing today. Whether it's people being displaced by the war in Ukraine, or nations, praise the name of our God, still struggling to, to get vaccines and vaccinate their people from the different uh, uh, variants of this COVID-19 and all types of pestilence in the world, AIDS, and all these other things in the world. Praise the name of our God. No matter what the storm is, it could be people struggling to decide whether or not to eat today or to pay for this life-saving medication that they need. Someone, hallelujah, listen to me good now, someone may have lost their job, God praise the name of our God, and don't know how they're going to pay the mortgage that's coming up due, hallelujah, April 1st, praise the name of our God. They don't know how they're going to pay the rent. They don't know how they're going to make ends meet, hallelujah, or they might be in a storm right now where death has visited their family member, um, uh, uh, visited their family in the past few days, months, or even a year, hallelujah, and you're asking God, when is this pain going to end? When or, or when am I going to get through, hallelujah, I'll, I'll get past this this diagnosis, this bad diagnosis that the doctor has given, how and when is I, am I going to make and see a difference? I know that many of us are asking the questions because we find ourselves in the storms of life. But I want to encourage you today, hallelujah, that the storm is passing over. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I was always taught Praise the name of our God. When you're driving, hallelujah, and you suddenly come into a storm, all you have to do is keep driving and eventually you're going to drive your way through the storm. Hallelujah. You may, you may be in the midst of a storm right now. Oh God, I, well, I want to encourage you today, no matter how long the storm has passed, your word for today that I want you to grab hold to and God wants you to grab hold to is the storm is passing over. When a storm comes in in your life, praise the name of our God. Hallelujah. You will, you will, hallelujah, stand or fall based on the foundation, hallelujah, that you have laid for yourself in this life. Some folks build their foundation on their bank accounts. And when their bank accounts fail, hallelujah, they look for the nearest window or bridge to jump off of them. I want y'all to hear me good today now. Some of us build our, hallelujah, foundation off of our jobs, off of our political titles, off of our job titles and some of us even off of our church titles. But, uh, but we find ourselves, when we find ourselves in the midst of the storm, I want you all to know that your title means absolutely nothing. Hallelujah. Because when you are going through, what you want and what you need is relief. Praise the name of our God. When you're going through, when you're suffering through, what you want and what you need is God to deliver you or somebody to come to your aid. I came by to encourage you, 
hallelujah, today that you must, hallelujah, hold on. Hold on just a little while longer. I want you to hold on based on, hallelujah, the foundation of Christ being, hallelujah, the one that's in your life. I want you to hold on, hallelujah, knowing that you're building your faith and building your trust on the foundation of Jesus Christ. If you want to make it through what you're going through today, stand on the foundation that is Jesus. Paul, hallelujah. He admonishes us and encourages us in 1 Corinthians 3, 10 through 11, when he says, according to the grace of God, which is given unto me as of the wise master builder, he says, I have laid the foundation and another builder thereon. Hallelujah. He goes on in verse 11 and says, for other foundations can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. In other words, you cannot make it. Hallelujah. If you're are not, hallelujah, building on the rock of ages, if you're not building, hallelujah, on the one, hallelujah, that is the cornerstone of the church, hallelujah, you just can't make it through. But I came by to encourage you today, if you're standing and you're believing on, on the Lord Jesus Christ, you can make it through. Oh God, you can be so careful to know that God is, hallelujah, the one that's going to help you make it through today. Oh God, I want you all to get this down in your spirit today. I want you to believe, hallelujah, that the storm of life that you're going through right now, hallelujah, is going to come to an end. Oh God, we dealing with people right now. We got so much stuff going on in the society today. Hallelujah. We got so much mess going on in this world today. Oh God, Jesus encourages our heart. He told us, hallelujah, all of these things so that we would know that when they happen, oh God, that, that we are right where we are supposed to be. He says that there would be wars and rumors of wars. He said that there would be pestilence. He said that brother would turn against brother. Oh God, I praise you. But he said to us, he told us that don't get weary and well doing. He told us that this is just the beginning of sorrows. Hallelujah. But the gospel of Jesus Christ has to be preached. And then once it's been preached to the entire world, then the end will come. Oh God, I don't want you to get discouraged because gas prices are going up. I don't want you to get discouraged, praise the name of our God, because food prices are going up. I want you, hallelujah, to hold on to the rock of ages, praise the name of our God. I want you to hold on, hallelujah, and know that you're going to make it through the storm. I want you to know today that although the storm is raging in your life. Uh, all you have to do is trust God. Uh, if he brought you to it, praise the name of our God. He can get you through it. I'm going to say that again. If God brought you to it, he can get you through it. Paul, hallelujah, likes, like many of us in our lives, hallelujah, he's going through a storm, praise the name of our God. Hallelujah, after he's going through storm after storm. I, I want you all to understand what Paul is suffering here. Paul, like many of us, finds ourselves in storm after storm, but he is build himself on the foundation that is Jesus Christ. It begins, hallelujah, so, uh, Paul's storm begins, hallelujah, on the road of Damascus in Acts 9 and 5 through 6. Hallelujah, he's, he's been blinded and he's afraid. But Paul finds himself building up, hallelujah, on the fact, or building on the fact that Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. What does he say here in Acts 9, 5 through 6? Paul says, uh, he says, and he said, who art thou, Lord? Uh, and the Lord said unto him, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. Uh, it is hard to kick against the prick. Uh, oh God, I praise you. But he goes on to say, and he trembled. Uh, this is Paul now. He's trembling, uh, and he's admonished, and he says this. He says, Lord, uh, what would thou have me to do? Uh, first of all, you must understand and you must settle in your mind uh, who God is. Uh, when you're going to build on the foundation that is Jesus, uh, you have to decide that Jesus is Lord. Uh, when you're going through a storm in life, uh, you have to put it on, hallelujah, the, the God of your salvation. Uh, even when he, hallelujah, hallelujah, when Paul, hallelujah, is blinded uh, and he's afraid, he 
he, he turns them and he gives God the glory. He says, who art thou, Lord? You must establish who is God in your life. You must establish who God is. He's building on the foundation that Jesus is Lord. Even when he is stoned, praise the name of our God, by the crowd, hallelujah, and he's dragged out of the city of Lestra. He builds on the faith of the Lord God, his, his God. The Bible tells us in Acts 14, hallelujah, you, you see he, has, he begins a storm in Acts 9. And then here comes a, a, a five chapters later. In Acts 14, he's in another storm. He is not only beaten, but he is stoned. And then he is dragged out of the city because the people believe that he is dead. And he is thrown on the garbage pile. Oh God, I praise you. But the Bible tells us that the very next day, oh God, in Acts 14 and 20, that Paul gets up out of the day of the trash heap and he goes with Barnabas unto debris or Dubai. Hallelujah. And he goes down, hallelujah, and he continues to preach the word of God. Paul finds himself, hallelujah, later on in the book of Philippians, he finds himself beaten. He finds himself thrown in jail. He finds himself despised. And all of these things are storms in Paul's life. Paul goes after storm, after storm, after storm. Paul goes through all of these things. And he is dealing, praise the name of our God, with storm after storm. Here, our God, I praise the name of God. How is it in life? Just the same with Paul. You can't seem to get through one thing before something else shows up. You can't seem, hallelujah, to finish dealing with one child before the next one start acting up. And here, Paul, he's dealing with the same kind of situation. He's dealing with problems after problems. He's dealing with storm after storm. No sooner than he gets through one storm, another storm shows up. And here it is today. In our text today, Paul was in serious trouble. Oh God, he was so much trouble that it placed his life phrase, the name of our God, and the lives of others around him in mortal danger. Hallelujah. Sometimes you go through storms in life and it will threaten the very nature of your life. It will, it will threaten your, your own mortality. And this is what Paul is facing now. He's been stoned and he's been beaten. He's been thrown in jail and whooped. He has been blinded and he has been tossed out of cities. The Bible says he's even had to be placed in a bucket, praise the name of our God, and let over the city walls because they were going to kill him in Damascus. I came by to encourage you today that none of you had anybody on your tail ready to kill you today. You might be dealing with some storms, but you don't have anybody after your life except that enemy called the devil. And I know he's raging hell all in your life. But there is a God that will come to your aid even in the midst of your storm. Paul here, he's in serious problems. He has serious trouble on his hands. Hallelujah. And we know, hallelujah, the story about what's going on with Paul. Paul is in the ship, tossed to and fro. In the Bible, tells us uh, that they're in a small ship here, uh, caught in the midst of the storm. Uh, hallelujah. I want you all to know, uh, I just want to give you a side note, uh, that the storm that Paul was in, uh, it was not just a regular storm, uh, but it was a hurricane. Uh, oh God, I praise you. Uh, they just didn't start naming storms. Uh, hallelujah. Back in 19, 
1955 or 1965. It was first written here in the word of God. They were in a storm and a temperance wind called Euchardan. The, 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 the hurricane was called Euchardan. In other words, it was a storm that would take you out. For the Bible says that they were in the storm and many days had passed without the sun or without the moon or without the stars shining through. And Paul is dealing with the storm. Praise the name of our God. And Paul finds himself along with his crew in mortal danger. Oh, praise the name of God. Oh, Lord, I give you glory because Paul now, just like us, go through storms in life, but the storm of life that you're going through right now is going to pass over. Oh, praise the name of our God in the midst of the storm. As I alluded to earlier, this was not on, not Paul's only trouble. He had on the, he had already. Uh, uh, was arrested. Uh, he was already uh, beaten and thrown in jail. Uh, and now Paul uh, was arrested. Uh, he stood before uh, King Agrippa. Uh, and now he has to go uh, to Caesar. Uh, so he's not only going to Rome, uh, but he's going to Rome as a prisoner. Uh, he's been locked up uh, and he's been in chains. And put on a ship headed to Rome. So now he's facing not only the prospect of jail, but now when he's going to Caesar, he faces the prospect of losing his life. And now he's we see that Paul is on the ship. He's caught in the Bible says. The midst of a turbulent wind and life threatening storm. And isn't it just like life? Oh, praise the name of God. Sometimes, before you get to solve one problem, I gotta keep hitting this thing. It seems that another problem shows up storm after storm. And just because I was one of give you a side note. Uh, just because uh, we are children of God, uh, that does not mean uh, that we will not uh, have storms in our lives. Uh, it does not mean uh, that you don't have to uh, suffer the sickness. Uh, it does not mean uh, that you won't lose uh, your job tomorrow. Uh, it does not mean uh, that you don't uh, or you won't have money in the bank. It does not mean that you won't go through a divorce. It does not mean that your children will always do right. Just because you are a child of God, it does not immune you from the problems and situations of this life. The Bible tells us and Jesus said it himself uh, in the book of John uh, and in this life uh, you will have struggles uh, and you will have turmoil uh, and tribulations in life uh, but he says stand by uh, because he's overcome the world uh, and if we find ourselves uh, connected to him uh, we too uh, can overcome this world uh, no matter what storm you're going through uh, at this very hour of day, at this time of day, 
the storm is passing over. Nevertheless, when you find yourself in the midst of the storm, I submit to you today, my brothers and my sisters, you can't give up in the midst of the storm. You can't give up just because you're going through. Jesus sent me to encourage your heart today. Just hold on just a little while longer. Hold on for another minute. Hold on for another hour. Just hold on for one more day and he will come see about you. I came by to encourage somebody that's ready to throw in the towel that you can make it through and you can oh God get to the next step and you can make it through the storm that you're going through I want to leave you with a couple of things that will help you through your storm that you're going through right now just a couple of things I don't want it to be so as though it is so profound no this is basic stuff that we as Christians tend to forget that when we go through a storm in life we tend to forget the very basic things that we should do to get through so when you find yourself in the midst of storms in this life the first thing I want you to do is stay connected to the divine navigator of the universe through prayer I'm going to say it again so anyone that's taking notes can write it down I want you to stay connected to the divine navigator of the universe through prayer. Oh God, I praise you. When the navigator is on a ship, he directs the ship in the way it should go by looking and chartering the course. Oh God, I praise you. By the stars. But in other words, regardless of what kind of storm you're going through, regardless of what kind of storm you're facing in life today, it is wise for each and every one of us to stay in contact with God. You must stay in touch with the one that knows all about you. He knows which way to go. He knows what direction to turn. He knows how you can get there and get there safely. Practicing prayer. When you are on the sea of calm, when you're on the seas of life, when you practice prayer in the calm seasons of life, oh God, I praise you. When the times of storm comes, it'll be second nature to you to say, God, I need you. God, I need your help today. Oh God, I praise you. In other words, don't call on God just when you get in trouble, but call on God each and every day. Paul finds himself needing to get a prayer through to his God even in the midst of the storm called Eucharist. Oh God, Paul needs to get a word through and Paul needs to speak to God. He needs God to speak peace in his situation. Verse 22 to 23 and the Bible says and now I exalt you to be of good cheer for there shall no man of any of the of which you be lost or oh, praise the name of God.
God. Uh, but Paul says it this way. Uh, for there stood uh, by me uh, this night uh, an angel of God. Uh, oh God, I praise you. Uh, I, I came by to tell somebody uh, who's been believing God uh, for a breakthrough in your life. Uh, that you've been praying uh, and you've been asking God uh, to come see uh, you in the midst of your storm. Uh, I came by uh, with a encouraging word uh, from the Lord today. Uh, he told me uh, to exhort you uh, to be of good cheer uh, because uh, he is with you uh, even in uh, the midst of the storm. Uh, don't worry about it. Uh, but God uh, is sending his angels uh, and he's giving them uh, charge over thee uh, to guide you uh, in the way uh, that you should go. Uh, God knows uh, who you are. God knows uh, that you belong to him. Uh, and no matter uh, what the devil is throwing at you, uh, you will uh, make it through. Uh, so the first thing uh, is stay in contact uh, with God uh, through prayer. The second thing, uh, if you're taking notes, uh, is to know uh, that God is, uh, he is the difference maker. Uh, write that down. Uh, write it down. Uh, stick it in a notepad. Uh, write it on your mirror. Uh, write it uh, where you can get to it. Uh, whenever uh, you need a word uh, that you need to know uh, that God uh, is the difference maker. Uh, verse 24, um, saying, uh, fear not, Paul, uh, thou uh, must be uh, before Caesar. You must be brought uh, before Caesar. And lo, here goes, uh, God have uh, given thee uh, them uh, that's on the ship uh, with thee. Uh, in other words, uh, God is uh, the difference maker. God will make uh, the difference uh, in every storm uh, in your life. Uh, if I had to call up uh, some living witnesses uh, or some ancient witnesses, uh, let's start with the ancient witnesses. Uh, if John, uh, hallelujah, had to testify, uh, he would come to you uh, and tell you uh, that he was in a storm uh, on the sea uh, with Jesus uh, in the boat. Uh, oh, God, fear uh, overtook him uh, and the other disciples, uh, the waves uh, tossed him through and fro uh, until uh, they thought they were going down uh, and they cried out, uh, Jesus, uh, have mercy uh, on us. Uh, do you not care? Uh, it should, if we perish, uh, you know uh, the storm, uh, hallelujah, tossing uh, them to and fro. Uh, but Jesus uh, gets up uh, in the midst of the storm uh, and speaks peace uh, in the storm. Uh, Jesus uh, was the difference maker. Uh, the next uh, uh, hallelujah person uh, uh, that's testifying uh, uh, is a man uh, uh, by the name of Peter. Uh, uh, he testifies uh, uh, to you, you and you uh, uh, that Jesus uh, uh, was the difference maker. Uh, uh, that Jesus uh, uh, will come see uh, uh, about you uh, uh, in the midst uh, uh, of your storm. Uh, uh, he tells uh, uh, of a storm uh, on the sea uh, of Galilee, uh, believing uh, that they were going to die, uh, believing uh, that they were going down, uh, believing uh, that the waves uh, and the wind uh, was going to kill them. Uh, but Jesus, uh, the difference maker, uh, came walking uh, on the water, uh, and Peter, 
eventually walks on the very thing, the very thing that was supposed to kill him. Jesus is the difference maker that will allow you to walk on the storms of your life. Can I get a witness? If you don't have a testimony, I'll go to my brother by the name of David. He goes and pins these words in Psalms 34 and 6. In the midst of his storm, he cries out, this poor man, this poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. God is a difference maker. That ain't enough. Let's talk to my brother by the name of Solomon. He knows that God is a difference maker because he says in the book of Proverbs to trust in the Lord with all our hearts and lean not to our own understanding in all our ways. If we acknowledge him, he will direct our path. Jesus is the difference maker that will get you through. I know you're saying to yourself, Brother Adams, Pastor Adams, Elder Adams, it doesn't matter what you call me, but I know what you're saying. Oh God, I praise you. How am I going to make it through when the doctor said, I don't have but a short time. God gave you life and God decides when you're going to leave this life. Put your faith and put your trust in the difference maker of this world. My God will make a difference in your life. And he did it for Paul on the ship. And he'll do it for you in the midst of your storm. I came by to encourage you that God will make a way for you. Can anybody testify that Jesus has been a way maker? I've been a difference maker in your life. Has he ever, has he ever healed you from any sickness? Has he ever provided for your needs? Has he ever delivered you out of the hand of your enemies? He is the difference maker. Ask the person standing before a judge. Hallelujah. And the judge tells them, case dismiss. Jesus made a difference. Not because they were so good, but they had a praying mama, a praying daddy, a praying grandmother, praying for them. And the judge changed his mind all because the parents or the mama or grandmother knew how to get a prayer through when the storms of life start raging. Jesus says, go in to your secret closet and shut the door. And when you get in your secret closet, let God know. And the God that sees in secret will reward you openly. In other words, because mama prayed in secret, because daddy prayed in secret, God delivered that child out of the hand of the enemy. Oh God, I praise you. The first thing that you wrote
wrote down. Is stay connected to God through prayer. The second thing that you wrote down was to know that God is a way maker, a difference maker. The last thing that I want you to know today before I get off this line is when you are in the midst of the storms of life. The third thing is very important. It is to celebrate your impending breakthrough. The celebrate your impending breakthrough. I know it's hard when you're going through hell and high water to celebrate that you're going to make it. But Paul says in our scripture text today, in verse 25, wherefore, sir and ma'am, be of good cheer, for God, for I, I believe God, that it shall be even, as it was told to me, I came by to encourage you to be of good cheer, just like Paul told the men on the boat to be of good cheer. I came by to encourage you with the word that God spoke in my spirit today to be of good cheer. I believe that it will be just as God has said it to me that he will bring you through the storm that you're going through. So grab hold of Philippians 4 and hallelujah and 4. Philippians the 4th chapter and verse number 4. It says rejoice in the Lord always and again I said rejoice. I came by to encourage you to get your praise on, to get a praise on your lips, to do like the psalmist says, and put on the garment of praise for heaviness. Oh God, I praise you. Put on the garment of praise for what you're going through. I can't stop right there. Verse 6 of Philippians 4 tells us to be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer. Here go prayer again. And supplication with thanksgiving. There goes that rejoicing again. Let your request be made known to God. You need a breakthrough. Start rejoicing. Thank God that you made it through thus far. And you're going to make it a little farther. Oh God, I praise you. The storms of life, I know they're real. And most of us know that as well. The liberating illnesses can come out of nowhere. Debilitating diseases can strike our life. When even the doctors don't even know what it is. Hallelujah. Devastating unemployment can ruin the very best of plans. Death of loved ones can turn your world upside down. And divorce is incredibly painful. Uh, disasters uh, or accidents uh, can wreak havoc uh, in our lives. Uh, but God, uh, can somebody uh, get a but God uh, in their spirit today? Uh, God will uh, get you through uh, your storm. Uh, but 
God, I know I'm going through, but God, I know what the doctor said, but God, I know I don't have enough money in the bank, but God, I know that gas prices are going through the roof, but God, I know that I don't feel like I'm going to make it through tomorrow, but God, uh, can somebody uh, just put a uh, uh, but God uh, in your spirit uh, today uh, when uh, you have a uh, uh, but God uh, in your spirit uh, when uh, you get a uh, uh, but God uh, down in your heart uh, you can sing uh, like uh, the composer uh, and Methodist preacher called Charles Abbott Tilly Tinley he says oh courage courage my soul and let us journey on for though although the night is dark it won't be very long oh thanks be to God the morning lights appear for the storm Storm is passing over. Hallelujah. He goes on to say, Oh, the billows roll. They're rolling high. And thunder shakes the ground. And lightnings, it flashes. And the tempers all around. The tempers are the storms that rage in your life. But he goes on to say, uh, but Jesus uh, comes walking uh, on the seas uh, and calms uh, the very storms uh, of life. Uh, the storm uh, is passing over. The storm uh, is passing over. The storm is passing over. Hallelujah. 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 I came by to encourage you that the storm that you're going through is passing over in Jesus' mighty name. Get it down in your hearts that the storm of what you're going through, can anybody like the Bible today name the storm that you're going through. Uh, the storm uh, in the Bible uh, was called uh, Euchardan. Uh, but your storm uh, might be called uh, a cancer. Uh, your storm uh, might be called uh, hallelujah uh, diabetes. Uh, your storm uh, might be called uh, a lack uh, of resources. Uh, your storm, uh, whatever it might uh, be called uh, today, uh, if you get this word uh, down in your heart, uh, the storm uh, is passing uh, over, uh, so shout uh, hallelujah, uh, hallelujah, uh, the storm uh, is passing uh, over, hallelujah. The storm is passing over. The psalmist, the song that I played earlier for you, hallelujah, says it beautifully. The storm is passing over. The storm is passing over. Your storm is passing over. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, the storm is passing over, yes the storm is passing over, your storm is passing over, hallelujah. I want to encourage you today, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
that the storm that you're facing right now, no matter what it's called, is passing over in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus, I thank you for your people today. I thank you, O oh God, for this day, O oh God. Even in the midst, O oh God, of the time change, O oh God, springing forward, your people found it not robbery to be here, to hear this word today. So, Father, in the name of your son, Jesus, I pray a special blessing upon their life. I pray right now, God, that the storm that they are facing, no matter what it's called, that you are bringing them through. God, you are the difference maker. Oh God, Jesus, you are the difference maker. And if you stepped, oh God, hallelujah, into a fiery pit, a fiery furnace for three Hebrew boys, if you stood, oh God, and sent an angel to close the mouth of lions in, in, uh, in Daniel's situation, God, you can do the same for anybody under the sound of my voice dealing with something called heart disease, dealing with something called diabetes, dealing with something called arthritis, oh God, dealing with any type of manner of sickness and disease, dealing with intestinal issues, God, stomach problems, God, head issues, oh God, in the name of Jesus. God, we pray today that the storm is passing over. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, bless your people today. Father, if I be a man of God, if I be who you've called out to be, Father, use right now, use your word, oh God, and heal them according to your word. Bless them and keep them, oh God, as only you can. Make your face to shine upon them. Give them a testimony that the storm has passed over them. In Jesus' mighty name, thank God and amen. I thank God for each and every one of you. I thank God for your faithfulness. I thank you for, hallelujah, being here with us again. I, I told you point blank, I gave, I gave you the simplest things that God gave me. When you are going through a storm, remember to pray. Remember to stay connected to the God, hallelujah, that could bring you through anything. Remember, hallelujah, and know that God is the difference maker. Jesus is the one that will make the difference. You don't believe me? All you got to do is turn your life over to him. Hallelujah. Jesus is the one that made a difference for us. He came to this world. He gave his life for you and I so that we would not have to pay for the very sin of our lives. Jesus is the difference maker. He is the one that God sent, hallelujah, to be the perpetuation for our sins. He went to the cross. He took your sins. He took my sins upon himself. Hallelujah. And he is standing by to receive you as Lord and Savior of your life. Hallelujah. I came and I want to encourage you today that let the difference maker, hallelujah, take control in your storm. Hallelujah. If you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ for the pardon of your sin, hallelujah. If you have not named him as Lord and Savior of your life, hallelujah, I pray today that you would turn your life over to him. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, that you would, hallelujah, receive him as Lord and Savior of your life, that you would allow him or uh, 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 be baptized in his precious name and receive the promise of the gift of the Holy Spirit in your life. If you want to receive him today, hallelujah, just pray, just pray this prayer with me. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus, I thank you for who you are. I thank you for being God. I thank you, O oh God, for making a difference in this world and making a difference in my life. I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you went to the cross for my sins. I believe that you got up out of the, the grave and God raised you, hallelujah, to stand as a witness for my sins. Oh God, we thank you. And say, say it with me. Lord, I thank you for taking my sins upon yourself. And Lord, I name you as Lord and Savior of my life to do and to be God over my life forevermore in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. We thank God for you. We thank you for giving your life to Christ. If you would like to be baptized in, uh, uh, in Jesus' name, if you'd like to go down in water, all you have to do is contact the ministry. Hallelujah. And I will be glad to baptize you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you are out of the area, just contact the ministry and we will get, connect you with the church that will baptize you in the name of the Lord. We thank God for each and every one of you again. You can always stay connected to the Restoration Church Ministries. 
You can stay with us, connected all week long. Sunday mornings, we have Sunday school at 10 a.m. And you're welcome, all are welcome to join us there. Morning worship at 11 a.m. On Tuesday and Thursday evening, we have corporate prayer. If you have a prayer request, if you would like us to take your prayer request before the Lord, hallelujah, and that's what we're doing. We're praying in calm times so that when the storms of life come, that we know, hallelujah, second nature to get a prayer through to God. So if you have a prayer request, you can send those prayer requests to us. You can do that by sending it to my inbox, which is Gerald Adams, or you can send it to the church's Facebook page at The Restoration Church Ministries. You can put it in the chat or you can private message us and we'll take those our prayer requests before the Lord of Prayer. And you can send it also to the church's email address, which is restored at TRC Ministries. Dot org Restored at trcministries.org. On Wednesday night, we have Bible study. All are welcome to join. Praise the name of our God. And we welcome you to take advantage of that time. Uh, and we have uh, Bible study on Wednesday evening at uh, 7.30 p.m. And you all can join us there. I want to personally thank each and every one of you that sow and seeds into this ministry, that bless the ministry so that we can do the work of the Lord in our community. We thank God for you. And I thank you for all that you do to make the ministry possible. But I really want to thank each and every one of you for all that you have done in the past year to be a blessing to this ministry. And if you would like to be a blessing, that information will be up on the screen. You can uh, send a, a love gift to The Restoration Church Ministries, P.O. Box 152 in Indian Trail, North Carolina, Zip code is 28079. That's P.O. Box 152, Indian Trail, North Carolina. The zip is 28079. Or you can give electronically to support the ministry. You can do it two ways. You can send it. If you have the Giftify app, you can give through the Giftify app. You can go to the Restoration Church Ministries. You will see the logo of the church, which is behind me. You will see a picture of Lady Adams and myself, and you know that you're giving in the right place. Or you can give through the church's cash app, which is dollar sign TRC Ministry. And that's dollar sign TRC Ministry. And I thank you again for your liberality and all that you give to the ministry. But most of all, I thank you for being a part of being here with us every Sunday, every Tuesday in prayer, every Thursday in prayer, and every Wednesday in Bible study. I thank God for you. Thank you for praying for me. Continue to pray. Not only for me, but for my wife, pray for my my parents, pray for the church as a whole, that God will continue to bless and keep us and uphold us as we continue to do the will of the Lord. God bless you all and keep you all is my prayer in Jesus' mighty name. Remember, remember what Pastor Adam said today, the storm is passing over. You're always welcome here at the Restoration Church Ministries, where the blood of Jesus covers every gray area of life. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. Peace be upon you is my prayer. I love you all with the love of the Lord and there's nothing else you can do about it. God bless you all. Have a great day in Jesus name.